Hi, I'm Ravi Panjala. I'm an engineer on the Word team, and today I'm going to tell you about Word's only data structure. <laughs> Maybe. There we go. OK, so let's talk about the problem that we're trying to solve right here. We want to take arbitrary objects. We want, them to we want to attach them to a stream of texts. And objects could be images, pictures, comments, basically anything you could think of that you might want to attach to a document. Um, it turns out that you can implement just about any feature in a word processor by sticking objects to text and having them stay there. And we want the objects to move around with text. So like if I'm typing, then I want everything else that's later in the document to actually move along with me and not shift around. And so let's try to build a data structure that actually does this. So we'll start with something that looks like this. Um, a warning for the faint of heart, this is going to have a lot of C code in it. It turns out the use of this, this data structure actually predates C++ by quite a bit, so I'm showing this as it exists. Um, so we have basically a mapping of positions to arbitrary objects in the way you would do it in C. There's a size, there's a capacity, there's an element size, and then it's just raw pointers everywhere, don't worry about that. Um, if you'd like, you can just think of this as sort of a flat map. Um, positions is going to be a sorted array of character positions in the document. Data is going to be an array of objects that um, align with those positions. So like the first element in the positions array matches the first element in the data array. And then element size is just the number of bytes to copy instead of using a template here. Like I said, C. So let's... So um, how do we update this when we actually add text to the document? Um, we could go through the array of positions and just increment all of those. That's order n, that's lame, we don't wanna do that. Boo. So instead, let's just keep track of where the last update was and how big that update was and just sort of work around it. So here we just keep track of the index of the last adjustment that we made and the distance that we adjusted things or that we would have adjusted things. Um, basically, we're treating every position after adjust pause as though it had adjust size added to it, even though we're not actually going and rewriting the data structure. Let's also add this search hint here. Don't worry about what that does. I'll explain it later. So when the document is changed, we record the adjustment. Um, let's say that we had um, a table that looked like this with these arbitrary objects attached to them, and we make this adjustment here so that we're adding eight characters after the second position in this array. And you'll notice that the real positions recorded changed, but the virtual ones that we're hanging on to um, are actually updated. So wait a second. This works, but what happens when we want to make a second change? Do we have to go through and actually update all the things from the last adjustment before we can record it? No, we do not. So this is kind of the clever bit. You start out with something that looks like this, and you want to make another change to the document. Let's say that you're adding four characters at position 15 in the document. So what we can do is we can actually just move the adjustment point around and sort of fiddle with all the positions between where we were before and where we are now, rather than having to actually touch every item in the array. So you'll see that in this case, we only needed to actually update the value of one element. And now in the new one, the position of the adjustment is one, the size of the, position, the, size of the adjustment is increased, and the whole thing's still consistent. So, in general, with a scheme like this, adjustment is order of the distance from the last edit in efficiency, and lookups are order log n because it's a sorted array, or technically it's two sorted arrays stuck together, so you can binary search both of them. But it turns out that in a word processor, most edits actually happen pretty close together, and especially while you're typing, edits happen really close together, and it turns out that people really care about the performance of typing. So while you're typing, um, adjustment doesn't change any positions. It only bumps the size. And we cache the result of the last binary search in that search hint that I mentioned earlier. And so we check that first when we're searching. And that's always up to date while you're typing. And so 
everything that happens while you're typing with this data structure it happens in constant time. So in Word, it's actually not called that. I think I'm getting kicked off the stage, so I'll just breeze right through this slide and say that you can actually implement just about everything in Word with this, which is why we sometimes say that it's Word's only data structure because just about everything's based on it. So in conclusion, standard data structures are pretty cool, but sometimes with a domain-specific data structure, you can do some pretty neat stuff. Thank you.